Houseplants can be very expensive, especially if collected obsessively. Equipment and accessories aren't particularly cheap either. To combat that, we can propagate and sell pieces of our private houseplant collection, either locally or online, on Instagram, Facebook, eBay or other websites. You might not be aware of this, but shipping plants in a cardboard box is surprisingly easy, except in winter maybe. And there is a huge market for houseplants. Hi, I'm Christina from Leafy Luster and I have been selling plants for three years now. Today I want to show you all of the data I collected throughout 2022 compared to the two previous years and show you a little bit of my process, the business side of it all and how much profit I actually made selling plants. My setup is pretty small and humble in my opinion, but I want to stress that my whole process of selling plants is still pretty casual. It's not a full-time job, it's just a side gig. I also have my YouTube thing. If you'd like to have a proper shop, then you probably have to do a few things differently. Since I have so many plants in my collection, I need to propagate them regularly anyway. And why would I let these props go to waste? Most plants can be easily propagated via cuttings, seeds or rhizomes. My preferred method is usually water or perlite propagation and I have a full propagation playlist on various plants on my channel. When rooted, I pot them into the 7x7 cm pots. I buy those off of Amazon in a pack of 100 pieces and they only cost me 17 cents per pot. Afterwards, I put them into my grow shelf with some really good lighting. It's warm in there, it's bright in there. And if I want some added humidity, I just use my trusty prop boxes for it. In the prop boxes, you can promote really good root growth and in a good environment, they just grow healthy and fast so we can sell more. I have optimized the space a little bit. I have these huge trays in here so I can water everything at a time. Obviously living in an apartment with 60 square meters, I can't scale my business much more than that without compromising my living situation. If I wanted to keep more cuttings, then I would need an additional space for that. If you are selling plants, please be aware of any regulations or rules in your country regarding sales, small businesses and tax. I, for example, registered an official small business this year, which is a whole nother story. Becoming a YouTube partner required me to do so. And then I thought, why not put in all of the plant sales as well? Because these were barely legal at this point anyway. <laughs> so I just did it all in one go. This entails a lot more admin and paperwork, a lot more taxes on my profits as well, but at least I am on the legal side now. Now I can only speak for Germany and EU stuff. Whenever you sell plants regularly, you are viewed as a commercial seller and in turn need to register a business. Now you see that's exactly the issue because it's a huge gray area what you consider regular sales. Is it one plant a month? Is it 10 plants each month or is it 20 plants every three months? There is a little bit of wiggle room so you can try out your plant business at first and if it's the right thing for you, you can still register a business later. Another definition for commercial sellers is if you intend to make profit and a lot of people get this wrong. Even if your business is not making any profits yet, if you have the intention, you are still viewed as a commercial seller. This was very rudimental, but I don't want to bore you with this stuff anymore. So let's get into how I list the plants for sale. Every month I go through the shelf and pick out the plants that I deem ready for sale. First, I'll have a little photo shoot where I photograph every single plant and I take several pictures of the soil, stems, single leaves and full plant just to give the customer as much information as possible. In the back I usually include a little ruler so you have this size of the plant as well. Next step would be the listing. So I use eBay or specifically eBay Kleinanzeigen. That's very similar to Facebook Marketplace I believe. It's very low commitment because you don't have to make a full website for a shop or something. I have a a description template that has all of the basic information about me as a seller, 
where to pick up plants or how I can ship them. And then I only need to adjust the details of the plant that I'm actually selling. On that note, I wanna talk a little bit about marketing. If you have your own plant shop, and website, you obviously need to run some sort of marketing for your shop. That's exactly why I chose eBay Kleinanzeigen for my sales because it is a widely known and used website and you can also filter for local sellers only. So that's really handy for me since I don't have to reach my customers. My customers find me whenever they search for a specific plant in the area. Just title your listings so they are easily found. Maybe put houseplants, indoor plants in there or use both the botanical and more widely used names as well. Another interesting topic is what to charge for your plants and how do you know how to charge them? For me, it's a mix of three different things. First, how much did I personally spend on this plant? Second, how much time did I put into this plant? How long did I care for it? Is it in a really good condition or not? Third, and probably the easiest way to find out would be just Google the plant, review similar listings to yours, and then just make an average out of it and decide what the plant is worth to you. I typically price my plants on the lower end because I want to sell them all and I want to sell them fast if possible. Next big topic would be shipping. I know a lot of plant sellers ship their plants. Some people don't know that plants can be shipped. So yes, they can. There are certain precautions you need to take and you need to package them in a way that they won't get hurt, but it's possible. This year was a new experience for me because since I am a commercial seller now, I have to abide certain regulations about shipping plants. You need a permit to print a plant passport for each shipping. That's why I decided to stop shipping plants and only sell locally. I was a little worried that the sales might plummet, but let me tell you, it hasn't made a big difference at all. If anything, it made my life way easier because I saved myself the hassle to run back and forth to the post office, pack everything up, all that stuff. It is noteworthy though that I live in a quite densely populated area, so it might not be the same for more remote locations. If I were to ship plants again, the customer pays the shipping. I would usually estimate how big the plant is and what kind of box I need. Then check back with the post office how much it costs to send it and then charge the customer. I accepted bank transfers, cash or PayPal. I was really lucky I could use old shipping material and boxes from work for all of my plants. But if you have to buy that stuff in, definitely account for that in the shipping cost as well. Now we have all been waiting for this very moment for the Excel sheet, the income and the profit. It doesn't matter if you are serious or casual about this, documentation always helps. Plus, I find it incredibly interesting to recap all of this at the end of the year. I type all of my plant prices, expenses, etc. into a simple Google Excel sheet. And as of 2022, I also got a professional bookkeeping software to help with the taxes later on. Up top, I have the materials, how much it costs, how often I bought it, soil, cocoa choir, perlite, orchid bark, etc. The nursery pots that I buy in, and with all of that, I can calculate how much one pot filled with soil costs me. So these are my expenses per plant sale. The cost of one pot filled with soil is 39 cents. This year I started to sell plants in March and tried to make a plant sale happen every month. These are color coded. Everything that is colored in was already sold. And then these are the plants that are still not sold. Contrary to what you might think, I don't sell only rare and variegated plants. In my experience, the demand for common plants was way higher than the exclusive unicorn rare plants because you don't need to sell expensive or rare plants to make some profit. I don't want to keep you waiting any longer. So here is everything that I sold and how much I earned from that. 1,225 euros. And then this column calculates how many singular pots I sold. With that, I can now calculate my expenses. So 39 cents times 116 is 
45 euros and 18 cents in expenses. Subtracting those expenses will leave us with 1,179 euros and 82 cents. Now I want to state that I'm not counting in my working time, our rent, water, all that stuff. But what I can calculate is electricity because I can just round up all of my grow lights and sum that up into roughly 17 to 20 euros each month. And this all rounds up to 1,038 euros and 82 cents, which is not bad at all. What do you think? Is that at all impressive? Let me know down in the comments. I'm dying to know what you think about this. Is it worth all the work or I don't know. Before you click off now, don't do it. I also want to compare this to the two previous years. I made some diagrams and like little graphs, so I want to show you. This graph is really fun because it sums up all of these sales each month. Up until May, sales were going great. And you see a little dip in June, July, August, which in my mind makes total sense. People are on vacation, holiday, they are spending their money elsewhere. They might not even be at home in this time. So obviously plant sales are going down. But then it's picking back up again in September, October, November, only to then die back down in December. And especially until the 24th, sales were going pretty slow, not much going on. Then the week after Christmas, the sales skyrocketed. I don't know why if people got money for Christmas or if they finally had some free time again. It was really good for me though. Another diagram I want to show you are the past three years and how my plant sales developed in this time for me. So right here we have the years in review. In blue we see the profit of each year. So in 2020 I only made 200 euros roughly. Then it was almost 800 euros in 2021. And now in 2022, we are at 1,180. I made a prediction for next year. If it would continue to go up this way, I would probably make like 1,700 euros with plant sales. We will see. That is the prediction anyways. Now, are you ready for a quick guide on selling plants? Be polite as a seller and buyer. Make a lot, and I mean a lot of pictures and give as much detailed information as you can. Only sell healthy plants and well-rooted cuttings. Ship Monday to Wednesday so plants don't get stuck in shipping. While you're at it, package your plants as best as you can. And most of all, don't be greedy. Bye. I love selling plants. It gives me the opportunity to meet new people, but it also gives me some money back to spend on plants, soil, accessories or electricity. So it basically supports itself. Now go out into the world, share your plants, make some cash on the side. I will leave you with my propagation playlist so you can do exactly that. I'll see you next time. Until then, enjoy your plants and goodbye.